In this video, we will look at a cybersecurity case study. The third step in the CTSC suggested process for performing a risk assessment is threat assessment and risk mitigation. In the previous video, we looked at identifying the threats that posed a risk to your system. As you look at each key asset in your system, you can begin to identify attack surfaces that exist and can be used by the threat to gain access to your system. With this information, you are able to identify the threats that your system faces. With that information in hand, you are able to start evaluating those threats and determining how to manage the risk to your system. Risk management refers to a coordinated set of activities and methods that is used to direct an organization and to understand and respond to the many threats that can affect its ability to achieve its objectives. Ongoing risk management activities are typically a substantial component of a cybersecurity program. Cybersecurity planning and programs are often components of broader risk management activities within an organization. Threat assessments are used to identify, estimate, and organize threats to an entity. Their purpose is to inform decision makers and support broader risk management processes. Threat assessments can vary both in assessment approach, that is qualitative, semi-quantitative, and orientation or starting point, that is asset impact oriented analysis, vulnerability oriented analysis. This task can be distilled down to understanding what the impact of a risk occurrence would be to the project and determining how likely that risk would be to occur. Then you can start deciding what you can do to reduce the risk to the system. An efficient way to perform this part of the assessment activity is to enter all of the information you have gathered into a spreadsheet. CTSC has developed the following structure for the spreadsheet. The table would consist of 10 columns. The first column would be the asset. The asset drives the entire process. And with it being at the beginning, it's easy to have the other information flow from there. The important columns would be the attack surface, the threat, the rating of the impact, the rating of the likelihood, and what mitigation was planned for the threat. Each threat should have its own row in the table and be associated with the asset it is for. As for rating the likelihood and impact, you can refer back to the videos on performing a risk assessment to get more information on those. The simplest way to rate them is to use a scale of high, medium, and low. With the table from the previous slide filled out, you have the risk assessment completed and you can begin to develop your policies and procedures that will make up your security program. These should include, but not be limited to, a definition of roles and responsibilities, a policy on data handling and access that should also include a guideline for classifying data, a policy on staff device management, guidelines for using public-facing systems, and an incident response plan. Also, you should have a privacy policy and acceptable use policy. This video has presented a case study of the risk assessment done by CTSC on CTSC. In the following videos, we will continue this case study. This process can be used by NSF CI groups to perform their own risk assessment and development of a cybersecurity program. If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI 1234408.